morning is Barbara Rothmaller. Pain go away. A new understanding of muscular skeletal pain. Barbara will explain the origin of painful conditions, for example, arthritis, tendonitis, back problems, leg cramps, etc., and why common medical practice, including drugs and surgery, do not really offer satisfying solutions. She will discuss the issues of hip and knee replacement and the role of the connective tissue in these pains. Her talk gives hope for everyone who suffers from pain of this nature and wants to be free of it. Barbara was a registered nurse at the, at the University Hospital in Munich. Disappointed by the way allopathic medicine treats chronic illness, she studied alternative medicine. After her certification, she specialized in classic homeopathy. She was a co-founder and board member of the largest homeopathic organization in Germany. She also taught natural medicine in schools for health practitioners. In 1996, she came to Mexico where she has her own practice for alternative and natural medicine. Over the last years, she specialized in alternative pain therapy. Let's welcome Barbara Rothauer. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Three of my mentors in my professional career, they told me, Barbara, when we are doctors, we have to be teachers too. We have to educate people. We have to help them to have a healthy life and to take care of themselves and take responsibility for themselves. So this is the reason why I'm standing here today and I'm very happy that a lot of people came to listen to me. Every fifth woman and every seventh man in our Western world is suffering from back pain, chronic back pain or arthritic pain. So that's a huge number and as you just heard, the medical practice right now does not offer very sufficient solutions. Today I'm going to talk about a different approach to muscular skeletal pain and I <clears throat> want to tell you that I am convinced that many, many people don't have to suffer so much from pain or to have knee or hip replacements if they would know more about the origin of pain, how pain develops and what can be done before it comes to a situation where they really have, for example, to have knee replacements. In my talk, I want to share with you the cutting edge of science in pain, therapy, and also I want to talk about my experiences I have. Now, I, I became interested in pain therapy when I, <clears throat> when I arrived in Mexico. That was a long time ago, and in Munich I was I had clients, babies, little children with diaper rash, otitis, uh, sleep problems, and they were my clients and also the parents. But when I came to Mexico, I was faced with amoebas, parasites, <laughs> and people did that. Barbara, look, I'm now 65. <coughs> I get arthritis, or the point to the shoulder, arthritis here, arthritis here. And I became aware of the fact that almost everybody thought, this is because I'm aging. So it was really almost like <clears throat> um, entering that group of age 
here you are, arthritis, just come, you know, I was waiting for you. So I thought, this cannot be right. And because my background is natural medicine, when we look at the person in a whole, body, mind, spirit, you know, we don't look just in one spot of the, of the person. So I became very much interested, why do people have this arthritis and pain when they get older? Now I started to, um, to touch people. I started to feel the areas where they had pain. And what I noticed was that these areas, they are very different from other areas in their body. They were hard, they were congested, they were swollen. Doesn't matter where it was, you know, the shoulder, the knee, the ankles, the neck. So I thought, okay, there is no good circulation in this area. There is congestion. And part of the natural medicine, we say there is waste substances, you know, accumulation of waste substances. So I started to, to work in a way that I wanted to free these areas. I wanted to bring back circulation into these areas. And it was quite successful. But the breakthrough really came when I was in Munich about three or four years now ago. The very last day, my friend uh, gave me a brochure about revolution in pain therapy, new paradigm, it's a paradigm shift. But I had to go back to Mexico. I was very curious to read what it is. And maybe you know that. Some, you get so many informations about this and that. And many of this information, they go here in and they go here out. So you don't process this. This is not resonating to you. But what I read in this brochure about this new way of pain therapy that really resonated to me, I thought, yes, exactly, that's it. So I had to wait a year until I could do the course in Munich. And here my little friend, hello, <laughs> is actually helping me. And um, I will little bit later explain what it is. You cannot see in the past, but in the front you can see he has little red dots. These are insertions <coughs> sorry <coughs> where <coughs> where um, tendons are connected to the bone. And this is um, a very, very successful treatment where we can relax muscles and help people quite fast. But also, I mentioned that at the beginning, the connective tissue is very important too, and it's also a very new um, <clears throat> knowledge in pain therapy. I combine now different techniques in my practice, and uh, I want to share this with you. Now, in, in my talk, I will discuss several points. First, very briefly, what actually is um, musculoskeletal pain, what belongs to that? Then, I ask you the question, is there any positive about pain? Then, I want to talk about the causes of this pain. And then, also, I want to talk about what is important to know about muscles and connective tissue. And the very last is then knee and hip replacements and the medical or the therapeutic consequences out of the whole thing. Good. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I hope that will not continue. <laughs> um, Definition, musculoskeletal pain, it's everything what we have, you know, on pain from here, from the head to the toe, around joints, in the neck, here in the jar, shoulder, arm goes to the wrist, to the fingers, carpal tunnel syndrome, for example, then the whole group of back pain, hip pain, knee and feet, yeah? I want 
to clarify, many people always say arthritis. There is a difference between arthritis and arthrosis. So arthritis is an inflammation of the joint. Arthrosis actually is a degenerative process. So most people, when they say they have arthritis, it's just actually arthrosis. It's not really an acute inflammation of, of the joint. Sometimes it is, is, but very often not. In my talk, I don't include rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, and it's a totally different subject. I also don't discuss fibromyalgia or cancer pain and uh, some sorts of nerve pain, for example, when somebody has shingles. Yeah, so this belongs not to, not part of this talk today. Now I ask you, is there anything positive about pain? What do you think? <laughs> so, of course, we need pain. If we don't have pain, we would not survive one year in our life. But I want to say something else. And I want to invite you to see pain in a totally different way. It's really an invitation to you. Pain is a message. Pain is a warning. It's like somebody is knocking on your door and telling you, listen, something is out of harmony in your life. Something is out of balance. Something is not in the energy flow in your body. That is with pain. This can also be with dysfunction. This can be with um, with illness, what I recommend to you is go into yourself. We have this inner wisdom, this soul. Oh, there are many names we can call it. There is something inside of us. And that is almost like a little friend telling us what is good for us, what we have to bring back into balance. That can be for one person, do more exercise, for the other person, don't do so much, don't do every day your, your, your uh, marathon training or something, you know. Anyway, for everybody it's different and it's, no doctor knows that, you know that. And I, maybe this information is the most important information I can give you today because it will help you through a lot of, lot of problems in your life, yeah? Just ask, why did you send me, you here inside, my friend, why did you send me this, yeah? This is the positive aspect of pain, in my opinion. Now, causes of musculoskeletal pain, the real cause, lies in overly tense, tight, permanently contracted muscles and fascia. The oxygen supply, the blood circulation, energy flow is inhibited when there is a tight structure and it followed by not a very good elimination of toxins and waste substances. And we have in our whole body, everywhere, not everywhere, but in many, many tissues, especially in fascias and in muscles, in the skin, etc., we have receptors from the nerve system. And these receptors, they measure constantly our structure, our mechanical structure how we stand, how we walk, how we, how we are positioning ourselves. They measure the oxygen um, in, in, in the tissue. They measure the chemistry in, in the tissue. And these receptors, they are connected, of course, to the brain and give signals if something is out of alignment. No brain, no pain. 
<laughs> the pain is here, you know, created here. But the body gives the message to this here. And <clears throat> so therefore, when, the, when muscles and fascias are tight, then it goes to the brain the message and then something has to be done. Yeah? Now, another in interesting part is that pain conditions build up over time. I experienced that many times that people come and they say, I don't know what it is. You know, I never had uh, I never had pain here in my neck, but I woke up and now I have this lot of pain. What is it? Or any other situation with pain. Especially here in the back, you know, after a long ride in the car, coming from Canada down here in the car. <laughs> so then they get up in the next morning and oh, 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 I cannot walk anymore. So, usually what happens? At first, the tissue gets tense, tight, then well, we don't have a lot of pain, maybe here and there a little bit, but we don't pay attention. Then it comes to contraction, and finally it comes to a spasm. And this is then really painful. Then people cannot move anymore. You know, that is then the situation. And, <clears throat> or the arm, you know. So this is a process that is gradually getting worse until the body inside says, stop now. You know, I have to send you that very bad pain that you finally do something about. Now, <coughs> um, there is the causes of pain. First, sedentary lifestyle. And I want to demonstrate you present drink. <laughs> and <coughs> okay. So look at me. When when I sit, you know, so I sit here. Everything in the front shortens. Here it shortens, here it shortens. Here it shortens, here it shortens. Over the time, not immediately, yeah? So, the back muscles, and we have about six layers of different muscles in the back, they have to work very, very hard to keep us upright. You know, not only that we bending forward, but then women have breasts, they pull us in front, you know, men have bellies, you know, so everything is pulling. Or not, <laughs> they have to. <clears throat> so, treatment of back pain is almost always a treatment also of the front. The chest, the abdominal muscles, the fascias here. So, sitting lifestyle is very bad. And you know what? Many people sit in the night too. And you know how? because they lie on the side. They have this knee position and they have the sitting position, yeah? So over the time, there is, con as it comes to this shortening of the front muscles. I will give you a little recommendation. It's wonderful. When you lie in your bed in the evening or you do a nap, just have a pillow here underneath the chest area so that you lie on your back. Have a pillow here, and then spread out your arms, your head, like just a little bit hanging down, not too much, and it opens your chest. The lungs get more filled up, the heart is free, here the vessels to the brain get freer, you know, it's a wonderful relaxing feeling, and it's not even an exercise for people they don't want to, to exercise, it's just a nice resting position. <laughs> okay, so... We have about 600 muscles in our body. And imagine, when we have a normal life with a job in the office or, yeah, office or when we are retired also, 
especially when we are retired and think we can take it easy. That's not a good idea <laughs> to take it easy. So we use about 30% of our muscles. And when I talk about muscles later, you will see how bad that is for the whole body, for the whole um, health and regulatory system. Now the next um, cause are injuries and traumas. Very often, when we have an injury, a trauma, a fracture, or after operation, we favor one side, we favor one arm or leg, etc. And over the time, when we don't correct it, and very often, it becomes a habit that we walk like a little bit this, yeah? So this brings the body also slowly in a situation where it builds up tension and, of course, misalignment. <coughs> Bad habits, for example, very cool, you know, standing like this. When you do something like this, then it's okay. But if you only stay this, it's not so good, you know. Or carrying the babies always here on the, on the hip, you know, the mothers. Or computers, too high, too low, or always looking at the side. And um, or carrying a purse, a heavy purse, you know, where everything is what you need, maybe not, not need, everything is in the purse and hanging down. So this is, um, these are habits. It's very important to correct these things and to be aware. Now, another reason for tense muscle and pain are emotional factors and stress, especially chronic stress situations. Stress causes tension. I mean, everybody can know that. This is not new. But when we are under stress, especially if there is no time of re uh, recuperation in between, then we tense up and everything gets tight, tight, tight. Yeah? There is, um, I, I mean, the material what I have today is so much and I cannot cover everything. But um, there is a doctor professor for orthopedic medicine, his name is Dr. John Sarno, and I wrote down his name here. He works a lot with issues, they actually are lying in the personality of people when they are achievers, type A people, always want to be good, etc. Yeah? So Dr. John Sarno, tension myositis syndrome. He wrote a very good, a good he wrote different, different books, but one is Healing Back Pain and this other is the Mind-Body Prescription. And he says, this is a totally different thing. The treatment is education and knowing where it comes from. <laughs> okay, now, um, food. I don't want to talk too much, too much, I uh, don't want to talk too much about diet, but in many cases, um, it plays a big role in pain situations and um, there are many, many, many experiences and proofs that when, body, when somebody has pain and it's not really reacting very well to regular treatments, to look at the diet. It can, can be um, over acidity, that's a term of natural medicine where we recommend them cleansing cures to free the tissue from waste and toxins and but it can also be food intolerances a lot of people this is now known since about maybe five ten years now a lot of people have food in, as intolerances against dairy products wheat etc gluten and that can also contribute to overall not feeling well and finally also showing up in pain. And always look at drugs, some drugs, especially the statins, you know, for cholesterol reduction can also cause pain situations. Now, my next point is talking about muscles, connective tissue, especially 
fascia, and cartilage. The muscles, believe it or not, really well. <laughs> Only 10 minutes, so I have to speed up. <laughs> um, muscles um, are actually our second heart. They help in the circulation of the body. So then I don't say more about that. Um, transport of oxygen, etc. Connective tissue was for a long time not really, uh, they didn't pay a lot of attention to the connective tissue, um, but recently very much in the, in, the, in the focus point is fascia. The fascia is that little, the fine, not little, the fine skin around muscles. So with the fascia, it has a lot of collagen and fibers that we, the muscles can glide along the bones and in between the muscles. And the fascia has a lot of nerve endings. So what happens is that when people, for some reason, don't move enough, then this fascia, which is usually a beautiful net, it's like a net web around the muscles, that becomes um, pro uh, proliferation starts, so there is a growing, and this net becomes uh, sticky and hard, and of course over the time, because there are a lot of nerve endings, pain starts. So this is one of the important information also, that this fascia plays a big role in our immune system. So when, when, um, when this fascia is not working well, it inhibits the function of our immune system and also it reacts, and this is the newest information, that when somebody is under stress, there are neurotransmitters, they are stress-related, and they affect the fascia. So the fascia becomes what I, becomes what I just said, sticky and tight. Good. The other information is cartilage. You know, everybody knows cartilage in the knee, hip, and that's the famous bone-to-bone -bone thing. Cartilage is gone, bone-to-bone. -bone. Now, cartilage does not have nerve endings. It cannot hurt. When somebody has knee problems or hip problems, it is the tissue around that is tight and congested and presses against nerves and inhibits the circulation and the oxygen levels goes down, what I explained before. But it's not inside. For a long, long time of development, the pain is outside. The person feels it is inside. But what, what is painful is the tissue around where there are a lot of nerves. Now, the cartilage, especially in the knee, it's called meniscus, or menisci. And it's very interesting. This, because it does not have blood vessels and it does not have nerve endings, but it's a living material and it needs to be nerved. It needs also to be able to eliminate the, the metabolic stuff. It's nourished by a lubrication, by a synovial fluid, it's called. And this fluid is produced by a skin around the joint. So now imagine, and this, this skin has a lot of blood vessels and produces the lubrication. Now imagine, when this area here around is not good, uh, working, you know, tight, etc., hard. It affects the production also of the fluid. But the fluid is necessary because it's the nutrition of the cartilage. So you see how everything comes together. Yeah? It's a fascinating, fascinating subject. Now, tendons, tendons, belong also to the
connective tissue. Every muscle ends in tendons. Tendon here, tendon there. Yeah. The tendon is the part where the muscle is connected to the bone. So bones do what muscles tell them to do. You know, they are not little creatures sitting in the vertebra and pushing the vertebras around. You know, it's the, it reacts to the muscular system. <coughs> and interesting is that these, you know, you see, for example, here between the ribs, where the ribs are connected to the sternum, you see here in the back, maybe I show it on myself, <laughs> here everywhere would be there a red point, here on the shoulder blade, along the spine, each vertebra, then a lot here in the area of the iliosacral joint, on the, on the hip bone, and especially here, the end of the femur. It's like on the femur, this is like a fan, you know, from here all the buttock muscles start. So in these insert, okay, these connection points are called insertions. And on these insertions, there are receptors also from the nerve system. They measure again, you know, what I told you before, the condition of the muscle. But especially when a muscle is tight, then when we press on these insertions, the person feels pain. It's at first just a little bit sensitive, but then pain. And I always tell people then, tell me how much is the pain between 0 and 10. One time I will write an article about this number business, because some people, I don't know, they start with 5 or they fall asleep in between, even if it's so painful, I don't know. <laughs> so the best is giving me with each point a number. <laughs> but anyway, so the higher the sensitivity is, the more it indicates to me the muscle is tight, there is an issue. So what I do is, I hold the pressure, I ask the person to breathe into this, imagine you breathe into this area, and when you exhale, you will relax. So I don't hold longer than two minutes the pressure, in some cases it goes like a elevator from the seven, seven, six, five down, you know, very fast. In some, I have to press endless until the scale goes from eight to seven. But anyway, it's very, very effective. And, um, but the second part of this is that people get exactly exercises, homework to do very specific uh, stretching exercises. Now, knee and hip, I rush now through. Here, I have something. <laughs> it's not a knee, it's not a hip, but anyway. <laughs> it's, this is the socket, this is the head, you know. Just imagine. And so, if they're normally, and this is another thing with the cartilage, the cartilage, like the disc too, they need the movement. Like, when, when there is weight on, it gets pressed, you know, and when there is no weight, it sucks the lubrication and nourishment, yeah? So, but normally this is in balance. So now imagine there is a tight muscular structure, especially around with the knee, it's the quadriceps, that is the main problem in knee, in knee situations. It goes like this. And what happens is, over the time, it scratches the wonderful cartilage away, you know? So, but this is a process that takes time, and before you have pain, but it's not inside, because there is no nerve, there are no nerve endings, yeah? So the treatment of, um, for example, hip or knee, would be going on the insertions where the tendons are connected. This is, for example, on the knee. It's here and here, along the femur, here. Always looking, you know, is there anything else with an ankle? 
problem, the foot problem, or, you know, these are three weight-bearing joints, hip, knee, and ankle. So if there's anything, for example, on the big toe, and you cannot really walk well because the toe hurts, it, over the time, it can affect the whole thing, finally, also the back, you know, because everything is connected to each other. I am not, I am not against replacements, hip and knee replacements. I know a lot of people, they had replacements and they go wonderful, you know. If it comes to a situation where the person really uh, suffers a lot from pain and the x-ray show how, how bad it is, then of course no question at all, you know. But there is a long, long time process before where it can be done a lot of good and of prevention and avoidance. Good. Now, the alternative, alternative and um, the therapeutic consequences. You probably can imagine now, it <coughs> almost follows what I said before. First, change your belief system. Arthritis and pain is not because of aging. Of course, aging, yeah, 65, 70, 80 years, you know, of, we are not young anymore, of course. <laughs> but I know a lot of people, they are, yeah, 80, 90 even, you know, they dance and they feel well. You know, it's wonderful to see these people. So change your belief system. It's not automatically because of your age. Then taking responsibility, of course, it's important. And moving, moving, moving. And interest, and you know, you live here in Ariki Lakeside. We have so many possibilities to do what you like. It's not that you have to jog or going to the gym and doing weights if you don't like it. By the way, very, very important. If you have pain, don't do weights with these muscles. Because imagine, you know, a weak muscle never hurts. Never. What hurts is always the contracted muscle. And imagine you have a contracted muscle here, for example, and then you do weights. What happens? It gets more tight. Yeah? So, but basically weights are not bad, you know, but not when it's when you have uh, tightness in the muscle. Um, you know that uh, saying, use it or lose it? <laughs> okay, now, um, again, lakeside, a lot of opportunities. So my special attention really goes to people they never have done anything in their life, and they are suffering from pain. I try to... Um, get people here, they offer, for example, chair yoga. It is wonderful what you can do with uh, sitting on a chair. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sitting on a chair, doesn't matter. You can hold on a chair. No, I don't need it. Uh, can hold on a chair and uh, actually moving everything in the <coughs> body. Or you can have a one-to-one -one session with somebody of these people to help you get started. Things, yeah. <clears throat> then, in the alternative area, there are a lot of things, you know, I mean, chiropractic is very common in the States, in Canada, it's not so common in Germany. Um, then, um, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, TENS machine, uh, energy healing, Reiki, you know, everything what helps to bring the posture back, the circulation going, cleansing the tissue, that hard congested area to free that can contribute to improve the situation. Now, um, injection, maybe there, I will have 10 minutes, I think, with, uh, no, not 10 minutes, but question. I can ask, uh, answer question if somebody has questions. Almost, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I will stay afterwards. So if you have questions enough, then you just can come. But I wanted to demonstrate. 
I want to demonstrate very shortly how I would treat a shoulder. So now I need uh, somebody. Yeah. Okay. With your with your chair, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe, yeah, here. Just sit down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first, of course, I would ask her uh, how the, since when she has pain and what, how is the range of movement, etc. Um, is it worse at night? Very often, you know, people have more pain in the night, and I forgot to say that. Why? Because in the night, the circulation goes down. Remember, first it's already tight, and then we are resting, and there is even less circulation, less blood flow, and the pain receptors stay here, here, here. So this is the reason. Another reason is cold. I think a lot of you, you know, they are here because they have more pain in Canada and in the cold weather. It's the same situation. So when you get cold or when you sweat, and then be careful that you are not sitting under a fan or something where it blows to that area. That can also cause situations. Okay, so I asked all these questions before. <laughs> and then, now shoulders requires the neck area, the shoulder, here the, the, scu uh, the, the scapula, the keybone, the chest, because usually what is, we are like this, you know, so there is the, the, the pectoralis muscle very tight and pulls the shoulder in front, yeah, so I would um, go, I would start here on the shoulder because the big trapezius muscle goes from here to here and to here, yeah, so all these, what I told you, the insertion of the muscles, yeah? So I would go here and I press and I ask her, give me a range, you know, maybe nothing. And then I treat, the more sensitive it is, the more important. So if it's five, six, etc., I will hold the pressure. 10 would be unbearable. But I, I um, would not go over eight usually, you know. So because then the person tenses up, and that's not what I want. So just that that is good variable. And then I hold the pressure. Let's say it would be eight or so. I would hold, and then I go to the next. So I go to the whole uh, edge of the uh, scapula. Then I go on here <coughs> on the spine. Then very important here in front. Here, where the, the biceps is connected and the, the pectoralis muscle, I press here, it's usually a very painful point and <coughs> very effective. And then here, the chest area, all here in between. I go then here on the back. So this is a, it's a intense treatment and it involves all the muscles, they play a role with that movement, yeah? <clears throat> and then afterwards, I do the massage and the fascia treatment. It's connective, treat, connective tissue treatment. And maybe somebody of you knows Rolfin. Rolfin, Ida Rolf, in the 30s, she developed that. It's a very painful kind of, of treatment. And she um, was very successful, but just until recently, they, they did not know, I'm almost there. They did not know uh, why it works. Now, with this new science about patients, they know it. Why it works? Because the nerve endings and the, the structure uh, and stickiness and adhesions, etc., that cause. So then I would loosen that up. And at the very end, exercise. So. When somebody shoulders can be very, very painful, very painful. So we would start with very simple things, just, you know, lying in bed, putting the, the, the back of the hand on your side and just rolling, just rolling, if it's very severe, you know, and then later more. Anyway, 
So, I, I think I've, I hope, I hope I have everything and I hope mentioned uh, collagen in the fascia. Well, I'm of an age where I don't have any collagen left anymore. <laughs> and I think that's true of many people at a certain age. Collagen has disappeared. But there's always enough, you know, and the thing is when you move, collagen will build up again, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Any other well, questions? No? I yeah. think Okay. Yes, I understand yeah, that okay. too. Is I'm here understand. for you. If you have questions, I have some cards on the bulletin board on the side here. And if you want to have my, um, that I put you in my email address, I give regularly lectures on health subjects. So then I will include you and send you the message. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much, Barbara. And uh, please dispose properly of your coffee cups and stack your chairs. Turn on your cell phones. And that's all for today. Thank you.